So I can pull up an app on my phone and look at my personal credit. Yes. Can you do that with your business? You can. Where do you, you go? You absolutely can. So there's is... listening to this. They're like, I don't know. Do I have business credit? Where would I look? <laughs> like, where do you even go? Courtney, what's going on? Welcome to the fight. Hi, Tom. I'm so <laughs> glad to be here. Thanks for having me. I know. We met in an elevator with our spouses back in October of 2023. Weren't you guys like coming from the pool or something? You were like down, we were. down at the pool? I, yeah. You absolutely were. That was a really fun trip. It was great to meet <laughs> everyone. Wow. And I got to meet the puppy. Not That's so right. Far. Yeah. <laughs> fighter Fighter was uh, maybe 20, 20 pounds then. And now he's six months old and he's over 70 pounds. He's he's going to be close to 100, I think. But anyway, he's getting big. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. So... Um, well, listen, we've been talking about making this happen for a while. And um, before we jump in, give us, uh, give us a 30,000 foot view of Coastal Capital and, you know, maybe how, how you ended up with, with the company and, and all that. So people have a little context to operate from. Sure. Well, yeah. I guess I'll start off because of the synergy and the space that we're in. Um, I sold heavy equipment. I sold Great All, JLG, I sold excavators, skid steers, all sorts of things when I came out of college. And um, it was a very offset position, but I got into the heavy machinery and, and really working with contractors and um, things, businesses that uh, we wanted to assist, you know, with obviously selling equipment. When I had my own business, um, I had a clothing store. This is after I was selling heavy equipment and I realized that I undercapitalized myself. And so I learned from two different aspects of the world, um, the sales side and then being an entrepreneur and mm -hmm. both of them mixed in. I realized that there was a way to scale my business that I had never learned. And so I started in equipment financing. And I started financing heavy equipment and I started realizing that they could offset um, personal credit with business credit, mm -hmm. something I should have known before I went into my entrepreneurship and right. undercapitalized myself. So my journey has been different and very, um, you know, informative. And it put me in the position where I became really, really passionate about helping entrepreneurships in every aspect. Uh, try to build and establish and scale properly. Um, but it is unique because I, I do know a lot about the construction side. So Coastal Capital started in 2011 and okay. we have been servicing majority of our portfolio is uh, heavy equipment, construction. Our portfolio consists of, um, you know, single owner operator uh, contractors all the way to big, heavy yellow iron construction equipment up to, you know, $30 million. So we start at yeah. five and go up there. So we're a little what, bit wide range. What was your degree in? Advertising and marketing. <laughs> so how, how did you get a heavy equipment job? What What happened there? It's funny. I left college and I wanted out of Michigan. And so the second I graduated, I was offered a position selling cars in Atlanta. Hmm. And I moved as fast as possible to the warmth. I thought it would be warm yeah. in, in uh, Georgia. And I ended up linking up with um, one of the upper echelons of JLG. Hmm. And um, he offered me a position in sell selling heavy equipment in it was Southern California. And of course, at the yeah. time of my twenties, I said, who doesn't want to go to Southern California? Absolutely. Yeah, that's I right. Sell whatever it takes. So I took off and, and went to Southern California and, and sold for um, a used equipment dealer out there and, and learned a little bit about the, you know, the equipment and that space. And, and so my journey has been fun. <laughs> now I'm in I, Florida. I love it. Yeah. That's, I was just curious how you went from, uh, advertising to heavy equipment sales and then but but then then you go and get into the clothing industry so I it's did. uh I, you're I, you're a woman of many interests <laughs> I, think, I think the whole general um gist of it is that you always want to find something to pay for the clothing and yeah. so that was the that was the beginning stages and then um but yeah the entrepreneurship always was a thing i i absolutely wanted to be the queen of my castle but um yeah an educator at heart. Um, and so that it, it really has taken me to the space. And I'm glad that I've had the journey I've had because it's educated me throughout the process. 
Um, the failure d definitely, uh, that was one of the biggest things that educated me is yeah. undercapitalizing my business. So you learn. <laughs> so earlier you mentioned you've, you've learned to scale businesses in ways you hadn't been taught before. What, what did you mean by that? What, let's dig into that a bit. So as an entrepreneur, mostly a young one, um, and coming into uh, business, it's always nice to see whether it's new equipment or inventory or whatever it may be. It's always nice to look at that big, shiny piece of equipment or that mm -hmm. new branding of whatever you could purchase. You always want to think keeping up with the Joneses. So that's how I worked. Um, I always wanted to make sure that I had the shiniest asset or shiniest thing to keep up with somebody next door to me. And what I realized is that capital expenditure is what crushed me. Mm -hmm. I always thought that that would bring me the most generated revenue. But what I didn't know at the time was creating ROI and yeah. assets that could create and generate revenue. So as a 20 year old, I should never have bought a BMW, right? right I should right. have been driving something used and old. And I learned a lesson the hard way. And so when I work with business owners and when my company has learned to work with business owners, this is through the education process. I always say it's just like a the food truck company that starts in a tent. If they yeah. start by marketing their their food in mm -hmm. this tent to the right type of um, avatar, so you're in your right space, then you can scale accordingly. And I mm -hmm. always love to listen to all sorts of different motivational speakers, but um, Alex Hermosi said it the best. You could have the best hot dog cart in the world, but if you're not in front of a hungry crowd, you're never right. going to sell a hot dog. So it doesn't matter if you have a $5 hot dog or a 50 cent hot dog. If you're uh -huh. in front of a concert at the end of the night and you have a 50 cent hot dog, you're going to sell those hot dogs. Mm -hmm. So scaling the business, starting from nothing, I've seen people start with a $1,200 cash outlay and grow into multi-million dollar businesses because they scaled with a brand and scaled accordingly. And so I think that that's the most important thing to talk about when we're talking about money. So you just said a couple words there that make me tingle inside. You said scale with your brand. Yeah. Talk about that. Cause I talk a lot on this show and to this community about you have to build your brand. You have to build your brand, right? There's safety in a brand. There's you have expert status, trust levels are higher, all this. What, what's your take on building brand and scaling businesses? I will tell you personal journey currently. I have built a brand. I have things behind me that you can see. Mm -hmm. uh, and for all of the years, I actually started in 2007 and then 2008 happened, started again in 2011. And I decided it was time we have to build a brand because even when we have economic times that change, like COVID, mm -hmm. people trust in a brand. They trust yeah. in the face of the company. They trust in a person. So we're living in a world of, I don't know which social platform to get on. I have yeah. no idea where to put my social media marketing. We have AI taking over. We have no human touch, which we believe in my company, we want to bring the human factor into lending because you have all, all these different avenues online that you can apply for financing even. And so when you build a brand, you build a trust mm -hmm. and you build a name for yourself and you can build a brand. Even if you're a small company and you're only servicing your hometown, you can still help people throughout the country and you can have groups throughout the country. When you do that, your brand becomes acknowledged. And so recently um, we ran up on our fourth quarter, which was 2023 last quarter usually is our Best time of year. Everybody needs their tax deductions. So mm -hmm. they're looking for equipment, Section 179, things like that. And we probably had our lowest recorded month in history since we've opened in fourth quarter uh, in December. And mm -hmm. I thought, how do I pivot? How do I pivot? Yeah. So we pivoted with our brand and we have created uh, a, a new plan. And this is my own personal journey. But I thought the one thing I can back up from everything I've done through all of these years is creating this brand. And 
another thing that we do with our, our clients is um, when they do create a brand, it's easier to do a background, take a look at who you're looking um, at helping scale. Mm -hmm. So if somebody's looking to scale and they don't have um, the financial backing or maybe their credit isn't strong enough, we can look at what they're doing and how they're branding themselves and we know who's behind it. It yeah. gives you that human touch as well as sweat equity in your business. Yeah, it's, um, I, I'm thinking back to, God, a million years ago now, the first time I ever went to get a line of credit with our bank, my old partner and I, and, um, and the reason we got the line of credit, and this was, I, th I think this was a little right before the recession in 08, right? 09, like right, right around that period. I forget the exact year. And I think we only got like 50 grand or whatever it was. And um, for our, for our painting company, there were two factors that they told us because uh, I'll just say it the way the, my buddy who was like the sales guy for the bank, you know, that we met at all the networking events yep. and he got us in the door. Right. He's like, Tom, nobody wants to, nobody wants you to want, wants to be the one that pops your cherry lending you money. Like that, that's exactly yeah. what he said. And he's like, but once you get it, then everyone's going to want to lend you money. Right. And yeah. so what, what enabled us to get our first line of credit were two things. Number one was we had strong financial records. Like our, our books were in order, like, which was very uncommon for a contractor. Right. Yes. And the second f factor was we, our brand was so visible and we, we were everywhere. Like yep. just, just, we were fanatical about building our brand and the president of the bank said when we met with them and their loan guys and all this stuff, those were the two biggest factors that they felt good about taking a chance on us. And fast forward a few years, I ended up being on the board of that bank and this and that. So it was just a, it was just funny when, when you're sharing that, because there is that safety in the brand. So there is people take risk on people. And so mm -hmm. we put trust into people and I think that that's where we really lose in our decade that we're in is that there's so much out there that can be utilized through computerized systems yeah. and things like that, that take the human factor out. But when it really comes down to it, it's about taking that trust in who you're working with. So yep. everybody has a story. And if you can get that story and piece it together, you can feel more comfortable with it. And I think that that's what a brand secures you. And so, and branding gets visibility and then more branding comes out. And it's really through, just like you and I, we're here on this uh, podcast together because we met and we had some synergy and I, right. I absolutely love it, but that's because we're using our voices. And I think that's really where the branding happens. And it's so important to a business. So we see these guys, I say guys, like just men, women, contractors, right? These guys, use, use guys, right? Um, they'll, they'll post in our community all the time. They'll send questions in uh, for our Q&A shows like, um, I need to borrow money to scale my business. And like I told you before we hit record today, I am super hesitant to go, hey, go borrow money because 90% of the contractors that hear my voice on this show and all the things that we do, they're not even job costing. They they're they don't even have a fricking bookkeeper. Like there's a lot of basic things they don't have in place. And so, yeah. and I've just seen so many times guys go out and borrow money when that wasn't the fix. The fix yeah. was charge enough for your work, set a budget, market your all those basic things. So with that as our context. Who is a fit for some, like, how does somebody know that all the contractors you worked with for the past, what, 12 years or whatever it's been, 13 yeah. years, um, who were the ones that are the best fit to, to start having this conversation about, you know, borrowing money? Well, let's start with, I don't ever want to advise anyone and nor does anyone that I surround myself with or teach want anyone to take from Peter to pay Paul. That's absolutely something that we don't teach in finance. There's people who are in, um, you know, banking and whatnot that they mm -hmm. want the deal. We're not in that type of business. We're in the education yeah. business. And so with my company, uh, we really, really want to talk with the client and see what they're three-year goal is, one-year goal. Maybe they don't even, maybe they haven't established that. So we start mm -hmm. establishing what they want. Maybe like you said, you, you 
had a painter, you were a painter, you had a yep. painting company. Okay. How many jobs do you want to secure this year? What will it take to secure the job? You need a truck or are you going to rent a truck? Do you have the supplies? What is the necessity versus the accessory? We always right. want to separate that. We also want to see if somebody has large contracts and they're about to lose a bid and maybe they're getting ready to scale to the next level and they don't know that they can borrow money against that job. We want to make sure that's secure. But mm -hmm. we can work with people who I mean, we are obvious niche would be anyone who is doing over $200,000 a year mm -hmm. and up. Um, but $200,000 a year, it's not going to navigate you to a big, huge piece of uh, right. you know the pie. We're going to scale it properly. So we need to see what the necessity versus the accessory is. And we have what's great about um, alternative financing, not bank financing, is we have sources that can go all the way from SBA loans, lines of credit, short-term bridge notes, all the way to financing for equipment out five years without an upfront payment. Yeah. Maybe they have skip or seasonal payments. Maybe you're in, maybe you're a roofer and in the snow and mm -hmm. your seasonal seasonal job. So we want to make sure that we it, it 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 mitigates the risk of the client. But um, really, it's about learning what business credit can do because yeah. it can really help you scale your business without commingling your personal credit. And I think that's where small companies yeah. don't take the risk. And even if you're doing something for $10,000 over a certain amount of time that you can afford the payment, that business credits, what's going to separate your business from your personal. And that's how you can scale without crushing yourself personally. That's how you can still refinance your house without seeing a trade line on there. That's, and those are the things we teach. So it's not, it's not someone who is a perfect qualified customer. It's what they want out of their business and where they're going to scale in the next, you know, one to three years. And then we place them in something or not, uh, or, or let them know that they're not, not a fit, but at least they know how they can get to the next growth pattern of the business. You know, I was thinking about, um, I had a, we were mainly a residential painting company, like, like I think I shared with you. Most of our contract, we have, we have some commercial guys that listen to the show and in our community and our coaching programs and stuff, probably 20% of them. Um, what'll happen is a lot of these guys will have an opportunity to, to secure some work on a project that might be a year long development project, right? Mm -hmm. Or, or whatever or they'll get a commercial contract. And in the commercial world, it's very obviously, as you know, it's very different than the residential. You know, Mrs. Jones hires you to do a project in her house. You get your deposit, you do the job, she cuts you a check and you're paid. And yeah. a lot of times, you know, with GCs and builders and this and that and commercial stuff, they're 30 days, 45 days. They have certain draw schedules and whatever it is that could be tough. And, you know, I'm thinking of this guy who, who, um, he had this opportunity. He had to pass on it. He, it was like a $300,000 project and he was a smaller business. And it, this was one of those next steps for him to kind of grow his business, but he didn't have the cash flow to mm -hmm. fund the project, yep. you know, until, you know, uh, for, for him to get paid right in yep. 30 day increments or whatever it was. So this sounds like, this is a this is a solution for the guy who's running into those things. Um, Absolutely. And and there's also I mean, we have small we'll have small jobs that let's say uh, they're a contractor and they're doing a painting job, but then they just got a flooring job and they need mm -hmm. that piece of equipment to handle the flooring. Yeah. And they don't have that because they're used, used to just having the painting equipment. There are notes and bridges that we can do commercially. Um, although they're not doing commercial properties, we can secure them on their commercial line uh, as long as they're established LLC. So a lot of these mm -hmm. guys will be sole proprietorships. We right. can still do things under a sole proprietorship, but it's just the education and knowing what you what your next step is. I think a lot of people, they don't go and apply with the bank because they know it's going to take financials and all of these assets to mm -hmm. show the bank to secure the funding. And the difference between alternative lending and that is that we can do application only programs up to 250,000. So if you have a job and you can scale, I think one of the biz biggest mi misinterpretations of financing and entrepreneurship is that people give up because they don't have the 
knowledge of the in-between. How I have this job I can have, but my financials don't permit. Where yeah. do I fit? And so if they are gaining the knowledge to find out how to make it to that next level, not all the times will they have to say no to that job or that yeah. that offer because the door opens like this, you know, and if you mm -hmm. don't take it sometimes, there's not that next level. And so if you're coaching and, and working uh, with these guys to help them move forward, it's really a knowledge base out there to see if it fits. So you've used the term alternative lending a few yes. times. See, you live in your world. I live in mine. I don't use your language yeah. every day, right? So for those listening, what does that mean? Like it means non-bank financing. Okay. So, um, I, that's we, what I figured. Uh, I didn't yes. want to make the assumption. So we're commercial lending only. Um, alternative lending, just it's. I, I love to say alternative lending because it isn't alternative. It's it's not CD credit lending. It's still we 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 handle huge huge uh, company projects and we handle small company projects and we have. Mm -hmm rates lower than a bank finance at a lot of times and some a little bit higher. So we're alternative in those space that we don't take collateralization except for the asset or the risk of the file. And we have a lot more leniency than one credit box. And so mm -hmm. somebody might come in with a 500 credit score and they might need to borrow $300,000, but their assets you know, we're not, we're not going to take a home to secure that. We're going to actually look at the revenue of the company, if they have assets to pledge, if we have to go down that route. There's mm -hmm. things that we can do to structure a file that a bank would not look at. And so we use yeah. alternative finance because it's a, it's a separate option than walking into a banker. We have more lines. Uh, we're a trillion dollar industry, two trillion uh, as of last year. Mm -hmm. um, and we have been around, you know, to finance the railroads and leasing. And uh, if people aren't wanting to purchase the whole piece of equipment, we can do leasing. So there's, it's an alternative world um, out there and it's just something that's not educated. It, you're right. Because I think, you know, when, when most people think about uh, borrowing money for their business, they think bank number one, and then they think those shady, you know, lending places on the corners <laughs> in the hood. Secondly, you know, and, uh, <laughs> and family, I mean, and family, are, yeah, family, which, which, which can be a hard bridge to burn. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. You have also used, uh, talked a few times here. We didn't dig into it. You talked a few times about business credit. Yeah. That's something that is never talked about. Um, when you think credit scores and stuff, in fact, I know, a lot of people don't even know that you can have a business credit score. Yes. Like what, so if you what's have a that security number and, and you have an EIN, they're the mm -hmm. same digit, the same amount of digits, right? Mm -hmm. If you're going to want to start building business credit, the easiest way to start is put your phone, like your Verizon number under your EIN, put your electricity, electricity bill under your EIN. If you're writing off a home office, write off your utilities and things that you're writing off in your home office under your EIN. Start building and establishing business credit. You look at the real estate world and you think about all the LLCs that are opened to mm -hmm. hide the different properties and, and own the different management companies. They purchase homes under LLCs. I mean, they come to our, you know, people come uh, out from different countries into our countries and they form these established LLCs and, and S corporations. And I think people are, it's just, it's, it's a lack of understanding because when mm -hmm. I started, um, my business is a clothing store it was called chaos. It's so perfect for how it was. It's a great <laughs> um, name. Yes, it was. <laughs> I, I, I call my story chaos to capital. So it is kind of a fun story, but, um, was it chaos was with a K or a C? It was a K. Okay. <laughs> I knew it was. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I had to do that. Um, yeah. my mom screwed me up there. But, um, you know, I, I started as a sole proprietorship. And so when I folded in California because of lack of, uh, you know, capital, mm -hmm. I had to, I ruined my personal credit. And that yeah. journey alone was awful. Mm -hmm. And so to get reestablished, thank God I was very young and I was willing to be the person to write the letters and do all the stuff. And I learned through my own education, but that's a hard 
I mean, I wouldn't wish that on anyone. And so to understand that I could have protected myself with an LLC, you can be a single member LLC, grab an EIN mm -hmm. number, it, the cost outlay for what, you know, the, the differences between how you pay yourself, um, it's, it's really a much more aggressive way to protect yourself. And then if you want to scale that business credit, you can start by, let's say you need supplies and you don't want to finance anything. You don't need yeah. any equipment. You can get supplies. You can get a small credit card for the supplies yeah. and run that, you know, through the business. And so there are ways to scale on that level where you don't have to pass up a job or an opportunity when it comes open. But if your personal credit is, whether it's damaged or extended, or if you own a home and you want to refinance your home mm -hmm. and you think it's going to affect you pur purchasing a piece of equipment for the business, a lot of people do. They'll say, I'm buying a house right now. And so I can't finance for this job. And I say, we're not even doing a hard pull on your credit. Yeah. So we do not need to affect your personal credit score. And that's where I feel like I really would love to educate um, the people watching this because mm -hmm. it's a really small way to enter into a bigger scaling position um, with your job. So I can pull up an app on my phone and look at my personal credit. Yes. Can you do that with your business? You can. Where do you, you go? You absolutely can. So there's listening is, to this, they're like, I don't know. Do I have business credit? Where would I look? Like, where do you even go? So there's a there's quite a few places out there that you can look. My my favorite and the the most used is Experian Business Credit. You can mm -hmm. log in. It's free to log in and take a look to see if you have a scoring model. Um, there's Paynet score, Paydex score that are important. The ones that I um I personally, and this is my own opinion, you don't have to you know, trust in that. But the Dun & Bradstreet, um, I, I'm not a huge fan of that or Nexus Lexus. I think that they have mm. incorrect information unless you join their journey on a monthly uh, fee. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to have the reporting that's accurate. So business experience really the way to go if you want to see if you have business credit. And it's fun to watch it grow. So I started a second business when I started this one. I teach private yoga. And um, I decided instead of paying for the things that I created in my backyard, which was like a golf green and a hot tub area and things mm -hmm. for you know golfers to come over and do yoga. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to finance it. And, and the cost of money was a little bit more, but the write-off really saved me in the end of the year. But I started building that business credit and I okay. was like, wow, I have better business credit in this golf yoga than I've had in my coastal capital business because in a capital industry, you don't borrow money. And so I had to start establishing myself the way I'm telling everyone to do it here with the oh, EIN right. and the phone bills and the things like that. So that's good stuff. So, <clears throat> um, somebody's listening to this and they're like, I think I'm ready to start having these types of conversations. How do they, how do they get in touch with you? Where do they go? What do you want Coastal to do? Coastalcapital.com. Capital is with a K. You're going to have to drop that in the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll get the, that in the show notes. Yeah, sure. and it's fun. Um, uh, actually, my sales team is uh, made up of uh, old John Deere salesperson, uh, a, a gym manager, my mm -hmm. husband who is in corporate development. I mean, we have a lot of people who have had a lot of different industry experience, but it's free. It's just an advocate, a way to just call and find out where you're scaling and just get the advice on. It's almost like a coaching training mm -hmm. session. We talk to you about where you're going with your business, see where the next level is for you, what what the opportunities are ahead of you, and see if we can help in any way, even just to help you get established. Yeah, li listen, like like I, I've shared before, I'm very hesitant to... Um to put lenders in front of our community for, for the reasons I shared earlier and guys go to coastal capital with a K and book a time. If, if this is something you're interested in, and here's why, like the only re I mean, the biggest reason, um, Courtney, that you're here today is I know you're a good human being. Like we met, um, and listen, my, my wife, the queen, she's, she's like the, perfect gauge for people and you and her clicked like crazy it. and it was um uh you know and, and pretty much 100 percent of the time when she's said to me that person's a snake they end up being a snake and when she's that's a good person they're a good person and uh but i i've seen you in action i you know i was got to spend a few days with you 
uh, heard how you approach your business when you when you spoke from the stage at that event we were at. Um, and I know you're approaching this in a different way. So you guys, this is a safe place to just go see what's going on if you're yeah. in a position where you need some money. Um, there's no you know, there's no sales here. We're not, you yeah. know, that, that's the one thing. We we want to just educate. Our our biggest thing is, you know, people like people and we want to mm -hmm. help if, if, in any way, shape or form if we can help entrepreneurs grow their business and scale properly, even just by education. That's what we're here for. And so yeah. it is a safe place. Thank you. <laughs> well, and you know, I mean, earlier, I can't remember if we were recording or not at this time, but you're like, Hey, sometimes there's times where we'll get into somebody's situation and go, we can't lend you money. It's not best for you. It's not best Absolutely. for your business. You need to do like, and that's, we've both been around this world long enough to know there's some people out there. They'll do anything for the deal no matter yeah. who it hurts. Right. And I know that's not you guys. And, and that's why, like I said, I appreciate you sharing a little bit of this with us. And, um, so guys go to uh coastalcapital.com capital with a K we'll drop it in the show notes. Where are you at on social media? Where do you want them to follow you there? Cause you, you do some good stuff there. Oh, it's, a, I have a, a, but my link on social media that's, that's most, um, you know, viewed with a lot of our stuff is chaos court, which is my old clothing store, K A O S K O R T. So, um, take a look there and it has the links to everything, um, including the coastal capital and the lending. That's good stuff. Good stuff. We'll get it all in the show notes, you guys. And, uh, Courtney, appreciate you making time for this here today. I loved and it. We look so forward fun. to uh, helping tens of thousands of contractors stop stealing from their families, build the business that they want, all that good stuff. I uh, appreciate you, and we'll talk to you next time. Thank you.